So the preparations for the Olympics having started this week, we had a lot of clay court tournaments this week, of course. After Wimbledon, we usually do have the clay court events, but these ones are a little bit more important because the Olympics is coming up in a week's time. Let's go have a look at who actually won on the tournaments because there was a lot of tournaments going on. All right, starting on the WTA side of things, we had the Palermo Open where Zhang went back to back. She defended her title, beating Mukherjee in the final 6-4, 4-6, And then over in Budapest, we had Schneider taking out Sastovic 6-4, 6-4. And Schneider's been in great form. She won a grass court title before Wimbledon. She played okay at Wimbledon as well. And now she's won another title. So she is in some really good form heading into the Olympics. Over on the men's side, we had four tournaments, starting with an ATP 500 in Hamburg, where Feast took out the defending champions Zverev in that final, 6-3-3-6-7-6. Over in the Hall of Fame Open, the last time we're going to have this event on the ATP, it's been downgraded to a challenger event next year, and Giron took out Mikkelsen in three sets, 6-7, 6-3-7-5. Over at the Swedish Open, in Bostad, we had Borges taking out Nadal in the final, 6-3-6-2. Great to see Rafa back into a final over two years since we saw him in a final of a tournament, but Borges was just too good. And then in Gestad, Berrettini, 6-3-6-1 against Hellas. Very good week for Berrettini, and he'll be on seat at the Olympics, so it's going to be very dangerous to see him floating around the draw at the Olympics in a couple of days' time. All right, let's have a look at the players that went up in the rankings that were outside the top 10, and Mukova, after a very successful comeback week, making her first final, I think, since the French Open last year. She went up six spots to number 29 in the world. Berrettini, he also went up a lot, 32 spots, number 50 in the world, after winning his first title in a while. And Rafa, he went up 100 spots after making his first final in two years to 161 in the world. Still a fair way away from the top 100, but 100 spots is a huge huge drop or a huge change in his ranking after making his first final in a while. So some players there that are, we're very familiar slowly climbing back up the ranks. Players that went down in the rankings, Manorino failed to defend the points that he had from last year's Newport Open. Went down 7 spots number 32. Nagel, he drops down 12 spots number 80 in the world. Also dropping points from last year. And Tima Fever, she won in Budapest last year and could not defend those points and really dropped 57 spots in the world down to 160. So players there that couldn't do what they did last year, dropping down the ranks big time. Okay, let's start on the WTIA side of things and we only had a couple of players playing so no changes to the top 10 heading into the Olympics next week. We have Shiontek at 1 Goff at number 2, Sabalenka at 3 with Rebecca at 4, Paolini will be at number 5 with Pagula at 6, Zhang at 7, Zachary comes in at 8 with Collins at 9 and Krajikova rounding out the top 10 for this week. And of course the rankings won't matter after the Olympics because the ranking points aren't actually given at the Olympics anymore so they're all playing the Olympics, well most of those players are playing the Olympics with no rankings ramifications which is going to be really interesting to see if that affects the US Open Series straight up after. Over to the race to finals now, and again, no change at the top with Fiontech, the only player to qualify for the WTA finals so far, with Rabakina at 2 and Paolini at 3. Sabalenka stays at number 4 with Goff at 5 and Collins at 6. Krajikova stays at number 7, but we did have a little bit of a change down the bottom with Zhang, adding a lot of points to her title, going up two spots to number 8 after winning in Palermo, pushing Ostapenko down to number 9 and Kazakina down to number 10. So, the only player in that top 10 that played this week ended up winning a tournament and changing her ranking, and of course, Zhang did make the Australian Open final, which is where a lot of her points have come from. But winning a title in Palermo, especially ahead of Olympics, great for Zhang. Over on the ATP side of things, and again, no changes really to any of the top, with Sinner at number one and Djokovic at two, Alcaraz at three, and Zverev at four, despite making the final of Hamburg. Medvedev, he stays at number five, with Dimitar at six, and Herkatch at seven. But we did have a little bit of a change in the bottom, with Rude going up to number eight, pushing Rublev down to number nine, and that was because both of them didn't play well in Bostad, but Rublev lost a lot more points because he won the title last year, whereas Rude only had to defend the final. So both didn't play great, but more points dropped off by Rude. Rublev, and Dimitrov rounds out the top 10 for this week. And like I said, we've got tournaments next week. Some of these players are playing, but it's the Olympics that they're all focusing on coming up in a week. Over to the race of the finals, and again, no change. And no one qualified just yet officially on points, with Sinner staying at number one, Elkris at two, and Zverev at three. Medvedev coming in at number four, with Rude at number five, and Djokovic at six. Dimitrov coming in at seven, with Pass at eight. Fritz at nine, and Paul rounds out the top 10 for this week. But Sinner is about 500 points away from qualifying on points. So over the next couple of weeks, and especially like during the US Open or past the US Open or after it, we should start getting a few players qualifying for the ADB Finals in Turin at the end of the season. So there it is. No major changes because most of the top 10 didn't play this week. And of course, most of them are getting ready for the Olympics, which isn't worth any points. So I don't know how many ranking changes we're going to get over the next few weeks, but we'll keep up to date with how they go and who wins and all that kind of stuff. But let me know down in the comments below. What's been the biggest story for you this week or the most exciting part of the week for you? I love that Rafa's ranking is starting to come back into that top 100. It's great to see. Even though he doesn't know if he's going to play next year, it's great to see at least him getting back up the top and getting to finals again, which we, who knows? We didn't think that was going to be possible. Maybe after the French Open, we thought maybe he'd retire there. But that's the rankings for this week and the Olympics starting in a couple of days.